Oh, Aaron, I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I mean, this episode's already late. I don't know where Craig is now. You know, he, he thinks because he's editing the show, he can just turn up when he wants. I mean, I'm sure it's not the kind of professionalism that you're used to. Oh, that's all right, mate. I was only going to take in a gallery and have a cup of tea. Well, I mean, still, it's just not good enough. I mean, I'm sure, you know, that it's not the professionalism that you like to see, but anyway. Oh, look, here he comes now. Oh, finally. Yeah, Cra Craig, what's going on? What sort of time do you call this? Sorry guys, I had to have my jobs on. You know, one's actually paid. Well Jim, it does look like he's been pretty busy. <sighs> yeah, I mean I suppose so. At least you're here now anyway, let's get on with it. Right, let's run contents. Oh, actually just a minute Craig, was that, uh, was that Keith Lemon? No, I'm a massive fan. Can you get me an autograph? Not now, Jim. I'm a little bit busy, mate. We introduced South African hotshot Luke Magalui, who has bagged himself a slot on the KSP this season and is already making a name for himself. We round up the best action from the Pico A and KSP and speak to Christian Boza about kite surfing in the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. This episode, we've got a Cabrina subwoofer surfboard to give away and we reveal the winner of the best short stick. Move of the Month runs hot with some of the top strapless riders going head to head for your vote. We take a quick trip to Isla Mirada in Florida. My boy Sam Light continues his back move instructional series, this episode moving from back to toe to back to raft. And we play the show out with a classic section from one of the sport's most pivotal DVDs, Autofocus by Elliot LeBeau of ACL Productions. So as you can see, we're joined by Aaron Hadlow, who's going to be guest hosting the show with us this time. Yeah. Uh, Annalise is away. She's actually busy shooting a music video for her band Kovac. So uh, you can find them at kovac.co.uk. But pretty good excuse. But I reckon we've got a pretty good replacement. Five times world champion. Doesn't get much better. How's it going, Aaron? Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, last episode we had you on, uh, yeah. talking about your knee injury, uh, mm -hmm. that was quite a few months ago now. You've had some good news recently, I think, from the doctor. Yeah, What's definitely. It's been pretty cool recently. I went to the doctor on Wednesday for my final checkup. I've got the sign off to go kiting again. Not 100% back, you know, I can't go jumping straight back into Mo 5 straight away, but at least signed off to go back on the water now. Cool. And you've had a couple of little sessions on a skim board or something, taking it nice and easy, is that right? Yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of training recently, like just in the gym and luckily with Rebel with their high performance team, they've just been getting me out there and just getting the muscles back, getting everything back to normal. So I'm yeah. feeling good. So yeah. to jump on a skim board isn't too much of an issue, you know, it's quite stable. And now it's, uh, now I'm just finally progressing back to putting a pair of boots on and, and going for it. Nice. What have you missed most about being on the water? I mean, I think it's been like five months now, hasn't it? Oh, from my actual injury was in like the beginning of February, so yeah. almost seven now. Right. Like gone seven, it's been ages, but uh, it's gone quicker than I thought. I mean, obviously just the riding and watching everybody progress whilst you're kind of sat in your ass is kind of, kind of harsh, but at the same time, it has gone really quick. I've kept myself busy. Yeah. Been doing loads of stuff with Red Bull, loads of things, you know, just different shows and question and answers and traveling around from then. Mm. Loads of stuff with the brand, with Flexi4, working on the new products mm -hmm. a lot, doing a lot of promo trips, so. Yeah, suddenly it's it's time to get back on the water and it hasn't hasn't been too bad at yeah. all. Yeah, so it's been time well spent. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and here we are. We're in um, we're in a car park in in Goring, glamorous as it <laughs> is. But uh, but this is where you call home when you're in the UK. Yeah. What is it you like about spending time in this area? Uh, I just think it's a cool place to be. It's just one. It's got a couple of good mates here and a lot of friends close to Brighton, which is a good place. Um, I always spent a lot of time time down here in the past and decided to move here about three years ago. Um, my parents moved out to Cape Town and then I just find it a, found a base here and mm. for me it's just easy because I used to live in Cornwall but it's so far from the airports, it's so far from London and my sponsors. Mm. 
gear I can just cruise up and see yeah. Red Bull, Flexi, it's not far and get to the airport easy. So yeah. just a whole round the overall thing. And in terms of places to kite on the south coast, it's, it's probably one of the best. Well, it's got the infamous uh, Worthing effect, hasn't it? Do, yeah. you, do, do you buy into that? Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. crazy. Like during the summer, because the, we've got the downs at the back, Yeah, just pulls in any type of sea breeze. So, you know, st statistically, it's probably one of the windiest places mm. in the UK as well. So, yeah, so a bit of everything. Loads of good riding. Yeah. Not quite as windy as your other home spot right. in uh, Cape Town, which is uh, where you spend a lot of the year. Yeah. Um, for anyone who's never been there, can you tell them why you like it so much? Um, I like Cape Town generally. I mean, the kiting is difficult, but there's a lot of different conditions, and that's probably what keeps you motivated. And you're allowed, I'm able to spend a lot of time in one place without getting too bored. You know, you're right in the city, you can go out when you want, you've got everything you need, the food's good, all my friends come over. Mm -hmm and the conditions vary so much, it's just yeah. it's just ultimate for me. And a lot of people go there, maybe they don't like it, you know, it's quite windy, it is mm. quite gusty, it's mm. wavy, it's cold. Yeah. And uh, But for me, yeah, it's the place to be. Yeah, it delivers. It can be quite brutal, can't it, as yeah, well? Yeah, totally. Know, but I guess you love that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so next, uh, the next feature that we've got coming up is, um, uh, we're doing like an introducing feature with a uh, new KSP rider who's just made it onto the tour this year, Luke Magalui, who's an 18 year old from South Africa. Yeah. You must have seen him riding quite a lot. Yeah, I've seen him since he was a real young kid coming up. I mean, I've been in Cape Town for the last, well, over 10 years now, mm -hmm. going there and seen him progress every year. You know, he doesn't only do the waves, although he has started focusing on that mm -hmm. a little more, he's still into the freestyle and, mm -hmm. and the racing, he does everything all, all mm -hmm. through the year. You watch mm -hmm. him and He's a good all-round rider, which yeah. is cool, and it's it's cool to see him doing well on the on the KSP now because yeah. you know South Africa do have some good waves and some good riders, yeah. and it's good to see someone pushing it onto the international scene. Yeah, I really like watching him ride because he's bringing all his elements from kiting into wave riding, and it just looks so dynamic. Yeah, and um, I caught up with him in Cape Town, and this is what he has to say. Right, we're here in a very windy Cape Town above Dolphin Beach. I'm here with Luke Magalui. How's it going, Luke? Oh, good, thanks. This is just, just like a normal day here in Cape Town, isn't it? Typical, every day. Howling as we look across to the mountain. It's beautiful. Have you lived here long? Uh, yeah, I've lived here for quite a while, since 2000, and yeah, been kiting since 2006. And it's been, it blows like this almost every, every uh, twice a week, at least. Um, and the conditions here are really, they're really full on, they're really all round. You're a really all round rider as well, aren't you? Can you tell us a bit about uh, your career? You've, you've got some good achievements. Yeah, um, well here at Cape Town it's, like, it's either pumping or it's not pumping. And there's either ways, there's no ways. So to freestyle here it's very hard, super windy, super gusty. And uh, I mean, you get used to it. So I've had good results with the, the, the freestyle with, uh, in the SA Tour one, two, two, three years ago. And, uh, but my main focus now is waves, so all I'm doing is wave riding and it's the most perfect place. I mean, we've got so many different breaks, Cape Town, Big Bear, it's, yeah, that's all I focus on now is riding biggest, best wave I can find in Cape Town. And you're with RRD now, how long have you been with them? Oh, this is my second year now, uh, or full first year going into my second, and yeah, it's been really good so far, it's been so really nice. And Roberto's out here at the minute. I've just seen him downstairs. He's here for three months doing all gear development and testing. What's it like having the boss here for that long? Uh, it's <laughs> it's the boss. It's never good. No, it's it's really it's good fun to have Roberto here because the whole crew comes down. We, we test everything. We have amazing sessions together. But when it comes to work, it's work. So, I mean, it's no just the whole day. Like, we ride six hours in a day if it's not done keep riding until it's done dark light it has to get done so what sort of things are you doing are you gear testing or photo shooting or everything or developing gear or we, we're doing all of those actually we we're testing all the new kites all the new boards I mean developing new boards photo shoots so basically we get a whole bunch of stuff from from Italy that's been pre-planned for South Africa to be tested once we've tested it, we shoot it, and from there it just goes into into the mainstream. But uh, at the moment, the main focus in Cape Town is to to create new boards. So we focus all the the wave riding boards in Cape Town to get shaped and tested here, not in the toughest conditions. So, I mean, as soon as you get it anywhere else on a perfect wave, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And you're hoping to get on the KSP this year. 
yeah, there's a lot of practice here. I mean, there's always different waves. But yeah, the, the KSP, I've been registered now and I'm just waiting to find out if I'm definitely in and if, yeah, hopefully I do get in. How are you going uh, right? I know they've uh, brought in a couple of rights this year as well. Uh, recently, the last two weeks, we've had a lot of northwesters here, but um, we've actually been going to Plattworm and it's been really windy there. So I've, Roberto's been pushing me to ride on my switch stance and I'm actually getting it. I'm really getting comfortable with it. So I'm getting vertical now. Before I could just turn, now I'm doing everything. So it's perfect. Well, um, I'm going to let you go because I know you're itching to do a downwind um, before we get blown off this balcony. Um, but thanks very much for your time, Luke. That's Jess. Thanks a lot. Our next feature is rounding up the news, yeah. uh, the World Tours, obviously you've had a big hand in the World Tours over the years, um, have you been keeping up with them recently? Yeah definitely, I mean I was meant to go back and compete this year, I was looking for, yeah. pretty forward to getting back involved, uh, so I've definitely kept an eye on it, I went over to Pico A Germany just for, a, just for a day actually, just to see the singles and see what the level's at, mm. and yeah I mean it's, it's fun, it's good to see it moving in a, in a good direction, the scoring system's good, the live streaming's working well mm -hmm. it's starting to to be quite interesting to for everyone to be able to see what's yeah, going on yeah, at the, yeah, on the day yeah. and um yeah it just seems like everything when i was finishing on the tour there weren't mm -hmm. enough events to fill the calendar yeah. now it seems yeah. like there's too much and yeah. they have to push a few away yeah. so things are moving forward and yeah i'll be competing next year so cool. 2012 PKRA Freestyle World Tour started in Dakla, Morocco back in late March and it was business as usual for Yuri Zun who began the defence of his world title with a win. Bruno Kajir took victory in the women's event and the performance ladders looked set to be very similar to 2011. But this event saw some new names bursting into the top eight, starting with the youngest rider on the tour, Liam Whaley from Tarifa, Spain, who shone at the French event in Le Cat with a fourth place. Stefan Spiesberger from Austria and Christophe Tack from Belgium have showed promising progression at every event, and Italian Alberto Rondinha, as ever, looks consistently in the top three. A nice surprise came with the 2009 world champion Kevin Langeray coming back strongly after a lengthy timeout with injury, climbing from 9th, 7th and 5th in The Hague to grabbing 2nd at events in Adikora in Germany, proving he's still one of the PKRA's greatest competitors. So far, two-time runner-up in the championship, Alex Pastor and current champion Yuri Zun have been trading positions at the top. As the tour headed to the strong winds of Fuerteventura, anything could happen and the two top names ended up in a battle royale in the double elimination final, with Alex just managing to sneak top spot with a huge score after landing a massive slim seven in the first final. The boys currently stand neck and neck with two confirmed rounds to go, nail-biting stuff for show. We're exactly at the same amount of points, so it's going to be really, really exciting towards the end of the, of the year. We have two more competitions. So it's all going to be down of those two competitions. We have one more discard, so you know it's going to be really, really exciting. And uh, you know I'm going to train a lot now and you know try uh, try to win those two competitions. It's a similar scenario in the ladies, with 2009 world champion Bruna Kajir and current champion Gisela Polito tussling it out at the top. Gisela had a slow start, but has come back, and the two top female freestylers headed into the German event neck and neck on points. A PKRA first at the time. Gisela edged in front after the blustery, stormy event in St. Peter Ording, but Bruna has since snuck back into the lead after a better finish in Fuerta. There is an ever more popular trend for riders to compete in wake-style boots instead of straps for increased power and control. It will be interesting to see how this pattern develops and what influence it has over results come the end of the season. There's no doubt the discipline of kite racing is on a huge high after making it into the Olympics in Rio 2016 and the PKRA World Racing Tour is a fantastic format to watch the top racers do battle. Two big revelations this year are Brian Lake, a powerful rider at home in the strong wind conditions of Adecora and St. Peter Ording, and Ricardo Lacesse, more of a light wind specialist who excelled in France and Mexico. American John Heineken shines at almost any event he enters and still represents as the leading contender at this halfway stage of the season, with his training partner and close rival Adam Cook lying in third after Germany. It was a fun race. The last beat I went from seventh to third. We got around the weather mark right behind. Ricardo was in first and then Adam. Those two were pretty much overlapped at the finish and I was another few seconds behind. But it, was, it was pretty exciting. It's, it's fun when you're coming in just going 30 knots and trying to hold on and trying to push it to the level of almost explosion and hoping the other guy blows it, you know? So, for the ladies in course racing,
Ducati Roos has been the most consistent female rider and will be training hard at home in Holland for the next four years, aiming for an Olympic spot. Challenging her have been Erika Heineken, sister of John, who won her first ever tour stop in Mexico. The siblings recently won the North American Championships in San Francisco too. French champion Caroline Adrian came back from injury to give Katja difficulty in high air, dominating the event. And finally, Christine Bonniger from Germany shone at her home event, holding her first place right up until the very last race when Katja managed to pinch the win. No mention of Steph Bridge yet, you may have noticed. The multiple world champion from the UK managed to find the time to turn up to the PKRA Turkey event, dominate and win. The IKA World Championships are also coming up soon in October. Expect the usual good performances from her there too. Keep up to date with the last couple of events by tuning into the live stream hosted by Dave Taberski or find the live results, images, videos and more at the PKRA website. Thirty-six top wave riders from 17 countries gathered at Guincho Beach, Portugal from June 1st to 10th for the much-anticipated first KSP World Wave Tour event of 2012. Although some great riding and ferocious heat performances went down, including Mitu Montero grabbing a surprise barrel close to the crowds on the shore, overall the organisers and riders were incredibly unlucky to not get the right conditions to be able to finish the event during the entire 10-day holding period. Best Wave Awards were awarded to the riders with the highest single wave scores though, and the results were as follows. Round two, and the Mauritius event had a tough act to follow after last year's. But the one eye break delivered once again during the 10 day holding period from the 7th to 16th of September. The event took place just as we were wrapping up this episode, so check out the KSP website for much more action and reaction. Winners were barrel hungry Patrick McLaughlin, who just managed to beat last year's world champion Edson Cozzolino, and also score the event's only 10 point ride. New boy Luke Magalui, who you heard from earlier in the show, narrowly missed out on a podium and his rapid momentum was brought to a halt by Sebastian Ribeiro who's from Brazil. Last year's Mauritius event winner and wildcard entry Ninja Bicla once again proved that her deep local knowledge and understanding of One Eye is a true force to be reckoned with as she beat hotshot Yalu Langare to take the title at her home spot. Kirsty Jones just pipped last year's world champion Ines Carrera to the last podium spot in the third place final. We will actually be at the KSP Island event from 19th to 28th October, so we'll be bringing you lots of reaction from there, and then the tour heads off to the grand finale on Maui, Hawaii from the 19th of November to the 8th of December. So, fingers crossed for more firing conditions. It worked. I mean, the conditions were perfect. It seemed like every single wave was barreling, so I just went for it. That's all I was doing. I was just trying to hunt down the barrels, and I, I got a few good ones. I had one wave, I had two good barrels, and I, I think I think I got a 10, so I'm happy. We were just so lucky, we had big waves rolling in, and um, yeah, I, I knew what to choose, so uh, I was super lucky, and uh, and I just ride like normal, and I lost a bit uh, uh, before I was nervous, and after it was gone, so in the last waves I could really score. With the spirit of adventure coursing through his blood and always keen for a pop at the record books, Sir Richard Branson became the oldest person to kite surf the English Channel at the end of June. The 62-year-old virgin boss battled winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour and rolling swells mid-channel, completing the 30 miles from Dimchurch in Kent to Wimmera in France in a respectable time of 3 hours and 45 minutes. But this wasn't the only record his group set over the weekend. Sir Richard's son Sam became the fastest person to cross the channel in 2 hours and 18 minutes and the Virgin Flexifoil team also claimed the record as the biggest group to ever kite surf from England to France. Prior to Branson's mission, Frenchman Bruno Sroka broke the major speed distance record for channel crossings for the 100 mile distance in May in a time of 5 hours, shaving 20 minutes off Manu Batan's record that stood since 2004. How much do you think the Olympics is going to bring to kite surfing? How, how much difference is it going to make to the sport? I think the Olympics have already brought a, a lot more credibility to the sport. It now has become an actual sport. It's you know accepted by media a lot more. I could just feel that in Germany at the World Cup there, the interest from the media was a lot bigger and obviously everyone is talking about the Olympics. But also I think it's actually going to be a lot 
a, a big opportunity for the kiteboarding in industry and then for the riders obviously there is the opportunity now to get sponsored by your government or by the national sailing federations and actually get the support that was never there before have a trainer you know train with the coach and with the team yeah. that's something completely new it, it makes it possible for a rider to really become a professional are we expecting a big influx of windsurfers learning to kite surf now do you think yeah, I think that's definitely going to happen and it actually has happened already. A lot of windsurfers that have trained for the Olympics or in, in the youth squads, whatever, have already taken on kiteboarding now. Obviously wanted by their national associations, uh, you know, they've invested money into those people, into those kids, into the young, young guys. Um, training them for the Olympics and they're not just going to give up on them now but they're going to give them dif different opportunities which in that case is going to be kiteboarding uh, and yeah kiteboarding and I think that it's going to be very interesting because those people those athletes they all have a lot of race experience which a lot of the kiteboarders are lacking at this point so the kiters will have to train more on the tactical side and yeah. the windsurfers more on the skill side. on the skill side kite side yeah so we will all meet in the end. <laughs>Last episode we ran a competition to win a best surfboard. The question you had to answer was, who was the multiple world champion that best signed to the team at the end of 2011? The answer was of course Gisela Polito. And the winner is Eric Taylor from the USA. So well done Eric, it's a great prize, it'll be on its way to you soon. Now this episode we've got a competition with Cabrina and they've put up their subwoofer surfboard, another great prize. Here's Rio Stevens with more details. this is Rio Stevens and for this episode of the Kite Show we will be giving away a Cabrina subwoofer. The subwoofer is a 5'8 by 20, 20 and a half inch surfboard that can be used for both surfing and kite surfing. It's ideal for smaller waves, lighter winds, but excels for all riders. Now back to Jim and Annalise for it with more details how to win.
To enter the competition, the question you need to answer is, what length is the subwoofer surfboard available in? Find all the entry details on our Facebook fan page. Good luck. So this episode's move of the month is uh, strapless airs. Aaron, I've even seen you tearing it up on a surfboard time to time. It's been a while, but yeah, back in the day. Well, we've got loads of motivation for you now. Uh, we've got some of the best riders coming up and uh, you can't fail to be impressed by what's happening in the strapless world at the no, moment. No, not at all. The guys are ripping it now. What they're doing strapless and the airs they're doing and tricks and everything is, is crazy these days. So respect to them boys. Yeah, all well, good. Do you want to introduce this section? Yeah, so here's my favorite part of the kite show. It's move of the month. Bunch of guys, they forgot to put their boots on for some reason. Don't know what's going on there. But anyway, they're doing some sick tricks. Check out the Facebook fan page and vote there. Boom. This is uh, Nicola Porcella, and it's the punt of the month. And this was shot in uh, Maui, Hawaii, in uh, Waihu, May uh, 20th, I would say. And uh, this was a pretty big frontside air. I hope you guys enjoy it. McLaughlin. I'm 23 years old and I'm from Maui, Hawaii. I've been kiting for 10 years now and competing for a little over a year. I got into riding waves because I love it. It's the best feeling in the world. This is my move of the month entry. It's a strapless 360 off a wave. I try to keep the kite low and more powered and do the rotation fast and smooth like a surfer would do it. So, hope you like it. Gonna pay my way through this world Hi, this is Patrick Grubstock. This month we got a clip from the LTD filming in Portugal. Cheers. Can't you see this is my sacrifice? Tell me. Hey guys, this is Kiahi from Noosa, Australia, and this is my move of the month. States won't fade hard as I try. Hey, I'm Bear Carey. I'm from Santa Barbara, California, and this is a shove it to reverse out for the move of the month. It's a super technical trick, really fun to do when it's kind of sloppy onshore conditions. I've had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you enjoy it. So check it out. Well, I've spent many a day on the green this summer. No riding for me, unfortunately, but it's it's been pretty windy, I think. Mm. Fancy a brew? Oh, yeah, lovely. Oh, lovely, it looks nice. Oh, this is nice, yeah. Yeah, it's been a great summer for wind. And uh, also, of course, we've had the uh, Olympics going on, so the country's really been getting behind everyone. And, and then, obviously, in 2016, we've got Kai 7 in the Olympics. Yeah, I heard Ruben's quite into that. Mm. But it's, uh, it's starting to chill out a bit now. It's getting a bit cold. We could do with another holiday, to be honest. Yeah, you know where you should go? Isla Mirada in Florida is just coming into season. Oh, really? Really nice flat water, sort of shallow this far as far as you can see. Great for learning new tricks. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, back up the road, you've got Miami, all the sights of the city up there. And then you've got mad Key West down, at the, down in the south. Awesome place. Very nice. Yeah. Got any biscuits? Oh, I do, actually. Oh, I Fancy Jaffa. Spot on. Cheers, mate. Really, for learning, this is a learning paradise. I mean, people come down here from all over the planet because you can get right out about a mile offshore, and you can be in. You can pick your depth. We do probably 90% of our lessons here at Whale Harbor Marina, 
right offshore at the sandbar. We've got a really nice sandbar offshore here that's that's huge. It's hundreds of yards long and spread out wide. It's sand anywhere from ankle deep up to chest deep depending on the tide and exactly where you are. Uh, we, we do most of our lessons out there and then on the back of the island we'll leave from Whale Harbor as well by boat and go around to the back of the island and launch off of a sandbar out there as well. Um, there's a few other beaches that we use around the Keys, private beaches, private properties, resorts that we do lessons on um, by appointment if you're staying there and things like that. But the public is welcome to come here to Whale Harbor and ride. We have a launch site right here behind us that you can ride from and then we can also take you out by boat right offshore to the sandbar and ride. Our kite season here in the Keys is from around October through around May. Uh, it'll go through the fall and the winter is frontal related and then we get into the spring time and we're looking for a Bermuda high is what we're looking for where high pressure will come in above us north of us and we'll have that clockwise rotation and we'll have some nice easterlies uh, dominant winds or easterlies here so that's the main time of the season we get wind all year but in the summertime it's a lot more sporadic you might have a day uh, a week that you can get out and ride so most of our kiting here is done in the in the fall winter and spring with the winter and spring bring, being the best the best months so you know whenever you're doing a kite trip bring what you can um, a mid-range kite is is generally the best you know the winds not extremely strong it's fairly steady uh, we're on tens and twelves a lot but there'll be the days we're on sevens and nines as well uh, especially right as the front's coming in it's strong of course and it'll taper off uh, and then the, it'll clock around. We call it clocking around as the wind, you know, changes direction from the north around to the easterlies. And then we hope it just parks itself there at east for three, four, five, six days and blow 15 to 20 steady. One of the things that have helped us a lot over the years, because it's not windy every day, like anywhere, um, is all, all the other activities that there are to do in the Keys. Uh, in the Keys, paddleboarding is phenomenal because the water's shallow, crystal clear, so you can see everything. It's like eco paddling. Uh, we've got a charter boat. We go offshore charter fishing. Um, you can rent boats here. We've got a fleet of boats to rent from larger center console offshore fishing boats. So small little skiffs that you can take out to the sandbar and just go out there and have a picnic or have a few drinks and hang out at the sandbar. Um, so there's yeah all kinds of activities you can do here. So uh, you're never skunked. Uh, we go out snorkeling as much as we go kiting and wakeboarding. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting things going on with wakeboarding here in the next few years as well. And um, so yeah, all kinds of things to do when you're in the Keys. Uh, you don't have to just count on one thing, so. Next up, we've got part two of Sam Light's uh, Batmobile instructional series. We shot a lot of this at the cable park in Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, you spend a lot of time riding the cable. Do you find it really helps you kiting quite a lot? Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, when there's no wind, it's just ideal because that's when it's best over there and, and vice versa, so. For us to be doing all this wake style tricks and using rails and kickers, it's just, it helps your kiting so much yeah. and at the same time it's so much progression in it, it's so much fun though. It's just, just yeah. want to be up there all the time. Yeah. Well Sam's pretty mean on the uh, on the cable park, so um, here's part two of his series where he moves on from the back to toe, this time looking at the back to wrapped. Back to wrapped is a back roll with a front side 360. Um, basically means it's another 180 further than toe side um, so as you come to toe side you literally just drop it another 180 all the way around and land wrapped um, effectively you are wrapped up whereas blind is more just backwards okay um, that's the main difference so right let's run it through tell us what's going on so checking out nice big scoop edge it's basically Exactly the same as your first back roll. Um, you just edge a bit more, spin a bit faster, go a bit higher. Uh, so I've got my arms in, I'm doing the scoop edge and taking off. Then that is a, that was a good pause. That was a good pause, wasn't <laughs> it? Really good. Really good. Funny we had the camera <laughs> running to see that pause. I mean, there's a lot so going at this on there. Point, yeah. I've let go of one hand already. Yeah. Um, I've spotted my landing, yeah. and I'm looking like I'm about to land toe side, but in fact I'm going to land wrapped, which is important to this trick. Um, it's also important to get inverted. Um, you can you can do a flat one, yeah, and more of a flatter rotation, but it's harder to land wrapped. It's easier if you flip into it. So you can see here I'm quite upside down. Yeah. Um, 
I've spotted my landing and I'm coming in like a back to toe side. Like if you looked at it now, you'd think it was a back to toe side. You would, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the key is just finishing that rotation off and, and planting it in your hip. Your hip's the most important bit because if it's too high, it's going to pull you over. So now I am just touching down on the water. Um, you can see I'm still looking down at my landing. The whole time I can see the water, I'll be looking at where I'm going to land. Yeah. Um, in fact, here, notice, noticing my hand is a little bit high. Ideally, I'd want to keep it a bit lower. Yeah. Because um, it could pull me over the front. But I managed to land it and ride out. So first, I did lots of back to toe sides. Like I could never recommend doing enough back to toe sides because you get the muscle memory, you get the right flip. Um, the back roll is a different, different movement. So a back to toe side is already sending you into the back mode movement. Yeah. You constantly look at your landing from as soon as you've gone, so you take off, you've done your scoot roll and you can pretty much see your landing straight away. Yeah. So I'm looking at that fixed point the whole time, all the way to the landing and I'm still looking at it after I've landed there. Yeah. Um, but you're looking yeah. backwards now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm looking at where I landed. You landed. Right, yeah. instead of landing. But there's nowhere else to look, so you might as well look at landing. <laughs> <laughs>
get into a session on and it didn't get as crowded as, as the other two rails and people just roll through tricks so you know everybody kind of gets warmed up and then one guy steps it up and it just pushes the next and the next and then you know you see people having good days and bad days and when somebody's on they're on and, and you know stuff just starts going down. one of my favourite sections, move of the month, that's on the on the kite show, and it's a bunch of kooks. <laughs> <laughs> Fools. Boom. Get them out, bloody hell. We're still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is it's Eric Young from the USA. Taylor from the USA. <laughs> so Aaron, we've got something pretty special to play the show out with now. Something I think you're going to be pretty impressed by. Yeah, it's the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no.